Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Just a Fun Guy, and over the past few years on YouTube, I've made a lot of videos, a lot of different uh, types of videos. None of them really ever stuck, and I never had a set niche until now. Today, I'm relaunching my channel as a coin roll hunting channel. And a channel about coin facts, coin everything. And to start off, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you have like a big tub of coins or like a grandma's jar of pennies and nickels and stuff? And have you ever wondered if those pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, or half dollars are worth anything? Do you want to get in a coin roll hunting but you're overwhelmed because you have so many coins you don't know what to look for? You want to know what? I was the same way two years ago. I didn't take coin roll hunting as seriously as I do two years ago, but actually it's almost, it's actually less than two years ago, about a year and a half. I actually started taking it way more seriously during the pandemic, lockdown part of it at least, and uh, I'm going to give you, after all my information and research, I'm going to give you the uh, ultimate guide to coin roll hunting. I'm going to start off with pennies because they're the easiest and cheapest and work my way up to half dollars and maybe even dollar coins themselves. So on with the pennies. Pennies. When you first get into coin roll hunting and you're just getting started, I recommend starting with pennies because one, they're the cheapest to start with because a penny box is $25 of pennies. and as as cheap as you're going to get. And two, because when you coin roll hunt pennies, you have the best chance of finding something. They have the most errors and stuff like that. And when it comes to proof sets, studios, die cracks, all that kind of stuff, I'm not really going to get into that because they all deserve that. That's a whole separate video to check for those. But uh, there is one I will talk about when I get to it. I'm going to start with the timeline from now all the way back. So we're in the year 2020, or what I call the suckiest year ever. And in 2020, the penny has Lincoln's face and a shield on the back. And these current pennies are known as shield scents. Now, when it comes to collecting shield scents, what I do is I get them a roll of t uh, new coins. I've done that for both 2019 and 2020, keep them new and uncirculated. And hopefully in 30, 40, 50 years, those are uncirculated and actually worth something. But uh, when it comes to pennies that have some value now, you're going to have to go back to 2009. 2008 was the last year of the memorial scent. It had the Lincoln Memorial on the back. And in 2009, they had a whole bunch of uh, custom one-year backs, so to speak. Like, all celebrating uh, Lincoln's life. There was Lincoln's professional life. There was Lincoln on a lot. There was the Capitol building. There was, uh, I think there was also Lincoln's log cabin. So I think those are the four enders. The four... Um, Backs to look for in 2009. You'll see pictures of them as I'm speaking here. So if I did get it wrong, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have the pictures in front of me right now, and uh, there's too many to memorize. So uh, go back from 2008, we gotta go back to 1982. 1982 is the last year of the copper penny. I personally collect copper, but you can put it back into circulation because unless the copper penny is a blazer, it's, it's, it's really not worth much, but I collect the copper, and if you want to collect copper, copper is from 1982. It's basically the beginning of coins. Now, if, go back to 1958. 1958 is the last year of the wheat penny. 
they'll find wheat pennies in circulation, and wheat pennies go from 1909 to 1958. And some of the most common wheat pennies you'll find in circulation are from 1945 to 1958. And that's because those are the newer ones. You'll find 30s, 20s, and teens in circulation, but sometimes they're few and far between. Yet I got a 1919 low mint mark penny in a coin roll hunt I did the other day, so when it comes to that, you might get lucky. Let's move before the wheat scent. Before the wheat scent was a scent called the Indian Head scent. And the Indian Head scent was minted from 1858-59 to 1909. And your chances of finding a wheat head, wheat Indian Head scent ender, they're not wheat heads, they're Indian heads, in the ender or an ender bead on the end, and or a wheat scent in the sub uh, box anywhere, your chances are not 0%, but they are very rare. Because Indian heads are very old, and a lot of them have already been taken out of circulation and put into collections. But you could find an Indian head penny in your uh, collection, because a buddy of mine at Cornwall Hunt with, got Indian head ender in his uh, coin, uh, coin roll hunting. Like on the very end was an Indian head penny. And if I got that, I'd be freaking out. And there was one more penny you should look out for that's even older. It was only made for three years. And if you ever find this penny coin roll hunting, it is like you struck gold. It is called the Flying Eagle Penny. The Flying Eagle Penny was made from 1856 to 1858, and you, if you get customer rack rolls, there's a chance you'll find one. But you won't get a, a Flying Eagle in a uh, machine wrap roll, because the, the um, metals it was made of, it's not like an actual penny today, and the machine rejects it. So if you ever find a Flying Eagle, you struck gold, my friend. And going back to the uh, wheat pennies for a second, I said I wasn't going to get to the DDOs and the proofs and all that, but there is one thing you should look out for that's very obvious. In 1955, there is a penny called the Double Die, and it looks like the 1955 was stamped twice. It's very obvious when you see it, but if you do come across a 1955 double die, though I'll put the specs up right here for it, and they're pretty. It's uh, it's a pretty cool find. The last pen you should look out for in circulation is Steel Scent, 1943 Steel Scent. It's the only year the penny was made of steel. And that year, copper was rationed during World War II, and steel scents are fairly obvious to fish out of uh, corn rolls because while the rest of the pennies are brown and copper like, steel scents are silvery. They look like, like uh, nickels and all the rest of the currency. But if you don't know if you have a steel scent or not, run that penny under a magnet. Steel scents stick to a magnet. Copper ones don't. One step up from pennies is nickels. Penny boxes are $25. Nickel boxes are $100. And there's instead of 50 cents, it's $2 in nickels in a row. And when it comes to nickels, in the way of value, there's not much in the modern times here, but there are certain backs, you know, like there was a back that has the Louisiana Purchase, there's one that has Lewis and Clark, you know, cool backs or tails, yes, they're more common than I like that to look out for and collect. There may not be more than their face value, but it's still a cool find and I'd still take them out and collect them just because who knows if they're going to be valuable in 50 years. But, 
You go back to the World War II, and there are war nickels that are made out of silver. And to determine whether or not you have a war nickel, instead of the mint mark being beside the Monticello, it's going to be above it. And it's going to be a big mint mark. And a mint mark will either be a P, a D, or an S for the nickels. And S's are, can sometimes be proof coins, but I'm not going to get into that. But if you do find an S coin, they are minted at a very low rate. Or at least lower than the Philadelphia or Denver, but your P and D, so look out for those. But if it's not directly above it, and it's beside it, it's not a war nickel. And go back to 1937. From 1913 to 1937, there was... The nickel was called a buffalo nickel. And... If you see a buffalo nickel that says 2005 on it, that's not an actual buffalo nickel. I mean, for once, the uh, buffalo is facing the wrong direction. But it's got a buffalo on it, and a and just like the Indian head penny, it has an Indian, uh, I think it's a uh, Indian chief on the head and a buffalo on the tail. And if you find one of those, they're, they're, they can be more common than you'd think. But finding one, I'd say you got to be about 10% chance of finding one in a box. And you may not, but they're very old. And a lot of them have probably been destroyed or put into collections or who knows where they ended up. But what would be even cooler than finding a buffalo nickel would be finding a V nickel. A V nickel was made from 1913. Not from, not from 1913, but from before, which I should say is 1912, the V-Nickel stopped production. And the V-Nickel, you'll see, has a V on the back, five, and that is, stands for a nickel. And your chances of finding one of these nickels in circulation, it's not high, but I've seen it done before. And the books on the Cornwall Hunter's face is priceless because I'm shocked along with them. And there was a nickel before the V nickel, the very first nickel America ever made to call a shield nickel. And this is what the shield nickel looks like. If you ever find a shield nickel in a nickel box, it's like finding a flying eagle in a penny box. You struck gold, basically. The shield nickel is very old, and your chances of finding one cornrow hunting are like slim to none, but it's not impossible. Unless the coin is very, very, very old, like an ancient Roman coin, or very, very rare, less than 500,000 minted, maybe even less than a million minted, there is a chance you'll find it in circulation, so I may say your chances are slim to none, but they're not impossible. The next currency up you want to search is dimes. Dimes are more expensive. It's a $250 box for dimes. That's how many dimes are in a box is $250 if you didn't gather that already. But when it comes to dimes in the uh, last 55, 60 years, there really hasn't been much in way of cool custom uh, tail ends or backs. There really hasn't been much in die cracks or anything like that. But, there is one dime you can search for 21st century wise and that's the 2009 dime. But if you want to search dimes, but you really should look for a silver. Let's say you see something looks kind of silvery how do you determine if it's actually silver or just a really dirty dime 1967 and back from 1945 to 1967 all the Rosie or Roosevelt dimes which are the dimes we have today are made of silver and it's kind of easy to spot a, a silver dime but of course it could be dirty so 67 and back. 
And let's say you find a different kind of dime that doesn't look like Roosevelt and it's much older. Even older dimes to look for are Mercury dimes. And Mercury dimes, you can find Merc dimes in circulation. But being though that much older dime, a lot of them have been put into collections already. But this is a Mercury dime. They were made from 1916 to 1945. Mercury dimes look like this, and I made a silver. And the cool V coin to find in a dime box would be a barber dime. Barber dimes were made from 1892 to 1916. So if you find a 1900 dime, that's pretty cool. Quarters. When you want a quarter, I'll hunt quarters. This is where it gets uber expensive. A quarter box is $500 in quarters. And uh, you'd have to save up a lot of coins to and uh, return them to the bank in order to get that. Four penny boxes is $100. So think of how many penny boxes you'd have to save up to buy a box of quarters. Just to give an idea. And when it comes to quarters, they're some of the most difficult coins to hunt. You'll wind up with more skunk boxes than anything else, but if you do, if you do hunt quarters, here's what to look for. There are certain quarters that have a mint mark W on them. If you find a W quarter, those quarters are very low minted, so take it out of circulation when you can. And there are certain quarters that have, like, state quarters. There are, so you can take state quarters out and fill a book or fill a map or something. State quarters really aren't worth more than their face value, but it's still cool to look for them and maybe, like, a fill a book or fill a state quarter map out. If you want to look for silver, silver quarters are pre-1964. And George Washington silver quarters are from 1932 to 1964. If you want to, if you find an even older quarter, you'll, you won't find quarters that were minted in 1931 because of the Great Depression, but quarters from 1916 to 1930 are called Standing Liberty Quarters. And if you find one of those, that's kind of like finding an Indian hat in a uh, penny roll. You struck gold. And there are quarters that were minted even before that called Barber Quarters. And they were minted from 1892 to, from what I've seen, 1916. So if you're hunting quarters, take a look out for those. The last coin I'll cover is the half dollar. I was thinking about doing dollar coins, but... There are uh, a lot of varieties and stuff, and uh, just a lot more dollar coins out there than you'd think. So look, they deserve their own video. So, uh, half dollars. Half dollars are, they're the hardest coin to hunt, because they're the hardest coin to find. Not every bank will have half dollars. And if they do, they might have not have a whole box. They might only have a few rolls. But if you do come across some half dollars, here's what to look for. It's that magic number in coins. 1964 is the cutoff date for silver. And post-1964, look for the centennial half dollars. They're very common and not worth more than their face value, but they're pretty cool to find. They have the Independence Hall on the back with Kennedy on the front, and it celebrated America's 200th. But if you're looking for silver, they're pre-1964, they are 30% silver, and pre-that, they were more silver than that. And if you're looking for the more silver half dollars, you want to go pre-John Kennedy. The uh, half dollars to look for pre-JFK are ones with Benjamin Franklin on them, and then you have ones with the Statue of Liberty called Walking Liberty Half Dollars. And if you find those half dollars, it's like finding an Indian head a penny in a row. It's, they're few and far between, but if you do find them, 
It's pretty cool. Well, that's your basic guide to coral hunting. There is so much more I can get into when it comes to coral hunting, like proof studios, you know, crud die cracks and all that kind of stuff that I don't want to get into because this is for a beginner's guide. And if you want to know more about the coins or if you want to see more coin related videos or anything like that or if you want me to film a coin roll hunt, let me know. Until next time, my name is just a fun guy. I'll be your coin guy. And, uh, well, for now, I'm signing off. So long, YouTube.